All right, let's do this, right? Uh, so I'll just go straight to the slope formula. Now, as I said, you take your time and you do, uh, you, have, you have two points A, C, and you really take your time and you input this into your calculator, empty, empty brackets, okay? And you input them in empty, then you throw in the numbers, one, uh, seven, three, minus minus four. I think I'm going to get minus six over seven. Is that right, Susie? Yeah, no. Now we're just double check for me. I'm not too happy with that. Yeah. Now, the next deal is. This is the line AC, so we have the slope of the blue line. And it, it, it gives us the formula of the it gives us the formula of the red line. It wants us to check if the red line is perpendicular to the blue line. Now there is a formula for this. It's called m1 multiplied by m2 equals minus one. It's not in your table, so you need to know this one. Okay. When you multiply both slopes by each other and you get minus one. It means they're perpendicular to each other. Now you know the slope of AC, so you know that M1 equals minus six over seven. The problem is, is you don't know M2. What do you know about M, what do you know about BC? You know the equation of its line. I'm gonna give you two methods, okay? Because you might need both methods someday, okay? All right. Quite simply, what I'm going to say here is pick a value for y, any value you want. You want to pick 4 for y? No bother. If Sam picks the point 4 for y, here's all that we do. Is the way you chose 4 to be y? Is the way you chose 4 to be y? Now, because you chose 4 to be y, the x value was chosen for you. Okay? So you say 4x, and that's three, minus 3 times 4 is? Minus 12, minus 9. And then bring it over to your side. And then x equals 21 over 4. So, one point on the line is 21 over 4. Armour, pick a really easy value for y. A lazy value, which is the easiest value to use. Usually 0. Because what happens if you use 0? If I chose y to be zero, what would happen? I'm just left with and then four x equals nine x equals. Now, using this method, you can successfully draw a line if you want. You could also use the two points and get the slope, couldn't you? In the same way you did in question one. Does that make sense? Now, there is a quicker method. Does anybody know the quicker method? That's just to show you a backup option. If you, if you forgot the other method. Uh, there's a formula for the line. It's called y equals mx plus c. So what, what would you do here then? Get y on its own. So how much do you get y on its own? 4x. 4x plus 9, yeah. Multiply both sides by? Minus. Minus. Divide both sides by? Now, what's minus 9 divided by 3? What does this mean? What does the C value mean? The C value is where it crosses the Y axis. So that would make this point here 0 minus 3. What does the value in front of the X mean? It's actually its slope. Because M stands for slope and C stands for Y intercept. So for any equation of the line, when you get Y on its own, whatever comes in front of the X tells you the slope, and whatever comes in behind that tells you where it crosses the X. Okay, have you guys? So we now know the slope is 4 over 3. And what happens when we multiply both of them by each other? 
do they equal minus one? No, it doesn't equal minus one, so they're not perpendicular. Do they expect you to at any time you're asked to prove that two lines are perpendicular to each other, m1 by m2 equals minus 1. Every time. BC intersects the y axis at the point B. I think we already said what B was, didn't we? We already said that B is 0 minus 3. Okay, B is 0 minus 3. The next thing we want you to do is find the, the, the area of the triangle ABC. Now, A is minus 4, 7. Uh, B is 0 minus 3, and C is 3, 1. Do any of you remember how to get the area of any triangle using coordinate geometry? What form do you use? So go to page 18 of the tables, and you should be able to find something there. Help me out. So what do you reckon? A half x1 y2 take away x2 y1. Now what's the problem with this uh, formula? How many points can you use in the formula? Now you have to use two points. How many points do you see? I see three points to you. Now there is a rule. One of the points has to be at Zero, zero. Yeah. Which one's the closest to zero, zero? B. How do you move B up to zero, zero? So what you do, you add three to the, add three to the Y value. So what to minus four, seven then? Yeah. And finally what will happen to three, one? Yeah. Now you're down to two points, aren't you? You're down to minus 4, 10, and you're down to 3, 4. So what we can do here is we can say uh, 3 times 10, and then minus 4 times y1, minus 4 times 4. 30 plus 16 is, 20, is 46. I have 46 is 23. All right. Uh, while I usually move the closest point to zero, zero, it doesn't have to be the closest point. The closest point can be any point. You can move to zero, zero. Once you move the other points the same way. Okay, so. All right, let's move on. All right, lovely one of these. All right. What's the radius? You reckon? Radius is four. What do you think the height of the cylinder part is? From here to here. 18 take away four, take away another four. Ten. Because it's four in any direction for the for the hemisphere. So essentially we're finding the volume of a cylinder. Now what's the volume of two hemispheres? Two hemispheres is the same as a sphere. Now, when you look up the volume of a sphere in your table, you'll see v equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed. The volume of a hemisphere will be half of that. So a half 4 over 3 will be 2 over 3 pi r cubed, or 2 over 3 pi r cubed. That's if you're using one hemisphere. Because you have two hemispheres combined, what can you say? It's a sphere, isn't it? So we don't even have to do that part. You can just use the volume of the here. What's the answer in terms of pi? So it's the volume of a cylinder plus the volume of a sphere. The volume of a cylinder is uh, pi r squared h. Lob into the calculator. Four over three pi times four cubed. Okay, one hundred sixty pi. Plus 4 over 3 
or cubed. And it's going to be a fraction answer of some variety. Oh dear. Now I forgot to put in the pie. Seven hundred and thirty six out of three five. Remember your units, it's volume, so what's volume measured in? Millimeters cubed. Okay. If you change it to centimeters or so. I would do it at the start. I'd change eight centimeters into point A and I'd change eighteen into 1.8 and do it from there. That's the safe way of doing it. So we might have to do a conversion later on. 48 of these tablets are sold in a cylindrical containers which have a diameter of 30 millimeters. The load on the fit, the volume of the container is 75% greater than the volume of the tablets. So we're going to get the volume of one tablet and what we're going to do with that? We're going to multiply it by 48. So that's your first step. So you're going to get 736 over 3 pi, and you're going to multiply it by 48. Now what are you going to multiply the answer by? How do you increase something by 75%? You can multiply by 75% and add it up, or you can multiply by 175%, which does that automatically. So if I did uh, 100, Multiply by 175%, what will happen is it will just add on to 75%. So it will just give me an answer of 175. Likewise, if I did 200 multiplied by 175%, what it does is it just adds on to 75% for me. Okay, so what I do here is I just multiply this by 175% and just do it all in one go. No hassle. So go back to my answer from before. Oh, or not. Oh, that's a go. Oh, memory doesn't go back that far. All right, let's do this again. 136 over 3 pi. Pi by 48. And multiply by 1.75 or 125%. And we get a volume of 20,685. Well, we want that with one decimal place. So 64,741.9. Once again, millimeters. Yes. All right. Now, it's going to move on to the next page. Copy and paste this over. Now, I might not have answered the last question correctly, actually. I might not. I haven't finished it yet, believe it or not. What did I find out? I only found out the volume of the cylinder. If you reread the question, it doesn't, it doesn't want the volume, it wants the height. So, what type of container is it? It's a cylinder, isn't it? And the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. And we know that equals, uh, it was probably best I didn't round it off. So, actually, I'll keep it in terms of. Pi. So 20,608 pi. Now you'll see what I'll keep in terms of pi in a second. Because the pi's will cancel, won't they? What's the radius of the cylinder container? 15. 15. So pi times 15, where times h equals 20,608 pi. The goal of your question is to isolate your h value. So how do you isolate h? Knock off the pies, yeah. And what else? Divide it by 15 squared. Or, so you can divide 20,600 by 15 squared. And we should get 91.6 for the height. Okay, you guys? Alright. Point of dimensions of the smallest label that will cover the curved surface area of each container completely. 
only the curved surface area. So you're talking just about the, if you had a coat can, you're only talking about the red parts along the edges, okay? Now what's the curved surface area of the cylinder? There's a formula directly underneath it. Q, I, R, H. Now it also says find the dimensions. So what are the dimensions? Oh, that's really annoying. All right, let me explain this, all right? Uh, here is the net of a cylinder. Now, for this to work properly, edge here, when you put it into a cylinder, has to be the same as the circumference of the circle. So, the circumference of the circle, which is uh, this part here, has to be the same length as the green part here. Have we got that? Blue equals green. And what you say is blue is 2 pi r, and what's the what's the R value of this question again? Fifteen. Else. So L equals two pi times fifteen. And chuck that into the calculator. You're gonna get a ninety-four point, I don't know, two A. Your answer question there was millimeter. Never mind. Uh, we call that ninety-four millimeters. Okay. And what about the height? We already got that a minute ago, didn't we? 91.6, but if it says do it to the nearest millimeter, we'll do that as 92 millimeters. Okay, so what's the area of this then? It doesn't actually want you to use the formula. You could have used the formula and you could say 2 pi times 15 multiplied by 92, and that will give you an answer of. Uh, that will give you an answer of 8,671 millimeters squared. But in this case, it's a rectangle, isn't it? What happens with rectangles? You multiply length by width, or length by height, yeah, whichever way you interpret it. And we, instead of getting that answer there, we got 8,648 millimeters squared. Why is there a difference between the two answers? We rounded off, didn't we? We rounded off this one as well. That's why there's a difference between the answers. No, because it says to the nearest millimeter, so I rounded off everything. It's an interpretation of the question. Let's go. Move on. Lovely. All right, now this is the section B where you have a choice of two from four, okay? When you're doing the section B in the exam, I want you to read through all of them, really carefully, really slowly. Just read through them all and then think, which one do you think you really want to do? Look, have a brief scan down through the questions, make sure there's no part, you might find part A really easy, and then there could be a part C that you have no chance of doing. So you have to take that little bit of time to assess which one you're gonna do. Okay, now here's what we're looking at. Penny Farnos is top of the front wheel, large wheel. Yep, 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 yep. First, it can be called the bicycle, it's proper, you can see it. Okay, all of that doesn't matter. Okay, here's what matters. Now, what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing meters and centimeters. Have you guys seen that as well? I'm going to scroll down through the question to see if there's anything. Ah. Uh, meters per second, see that? And then I'm gonna scroll down a bit further. Keep going. Back to centimeters then. All right, we'll go with meters at the start, purely because of that part B there, isn't it? Now, so divide 42 by 100, and you get? Find 42, divide it by two to get? 0 0.21, that's the radius of the, that's the radius of the uh, small wheel. Divide 1.2 by 2 and you get? All right, and then what do we get here? 1.2 divided by 2? 
point six, right? Point six and point two one. Now the formula for circumference we already used earlier. Anybody remember? Two pi r. So it's going to be uh, two pi times point two one. Point four two pi uh, meters. And the other one's going to be two pi times point six, which is one point two pi meters. Okay. If the cyclist pedals the bike such that the front wheel rotates at two revolutions per second, calculate the speed of the cyclist in meters per second. Well, what happens when the wheel rotates? So you imagine a circle. Uh, that is obviously a square. You imagine a circle, and you imagine that you are here. Right, you're just point on the circle, okay? And then see if we can get it. Group. What happens when you rotate? Two, what happens if you rotate a full a full circle? So what happens? How much distance do you cover? One point two. Oh, yeah. And once if you do two of them, how much distance do you cover then? Yeah, you cover two point four pi meters in one second. Does that make sense? Yeah. Two pi times two pi point five point six. Yeah, a fraction answer instead. I did yeah. Yeah, that's one point two. Uh just put six over five on its own into the calculator. So, so Sam was saying that some will get six over five pi. That that's perfect as well, Sam. But if you're if you're worried about that, just enter six over five into the calculator on its own, and it will spit out that one point. Yeah. All right. So two point four pi is actually uh, seven point five or meters per seconds. Have a go at that. 7.54 meters per second. That's how fast it's going. Okay, now we're going to go for the next question. I'll copy and paste it back onto the original page. Oh. All right, uh, sorry. Now, uh, what's the next question one from us? The rear wheel travels at the same speed as the rest of the bicycle, but it rotates faster. Find correct the one decimal place the number of revolutions per second at which the rear rotates. Now, let's think about it. What distance does the big wheel cover in, in per second? Or, or also, yeah, it's it was two point four pi, or Sam, you could also use seven point five, right? Now, what? Well, how many spins would the smaller wheel need to do to cover this distance? Now, what I suggest what's called a simplification technique, right? If the big wheel, if the big wheel spins fifty centimeters every rotation. And the small wheel does 10 centimeters every rotation. What can, how many rotations of the small wheel would be equal to the big wheel? Yeah, you just divide the distance covered by the big wheel divided by the, uh, the size of the, the, the circumference of the smaller wheel. So what's the circumference of the smaller wheel? We have it up here, 0.425, is it? Yeah. Was the point? Uh, no, we got point four two. You multiply by two. two pi r. So two point four divided by point four two, and what you'll get is five point seven. It's in one decimal place, five point seven revolutions per second. 
If you did it the other way, Sam, with 7.54, you should get the same answer as well. Roughly the same. Yeah, 5.7 7 revs per second. Okay. So that was meant to be the easy part. But this is tougher than your leading start, in my opinion. I'm teaching harder questions, just in case. Now, let's keep going. This question looks pretty different. Okay. Let's think about this logic. Um, let's do it in centimeters, okay? What's the radius of the large wheel in centimeters? There will be okay with 60. What's the radius of the small one in terms of uh, centimeters? 21. Therefore, what is the length of this full line here? Huh? Yeah, so 81 plus 8, we kill 89. Okay. Oh, sorry guys. Uh, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself at the moment. So you have to excuse me. I'm actually so far ahead of myself right now. I'm not even doing this question yet. I just looked up and saw that straight away. Now, what's a common tangent, lads? A line that hits it only once. I think the x-axis is a tangent to both circles. Does that make sense? The x-axis is a tangent to both circles. Would that make sense? Now, you could say the x-axis. Will that get me full max? Why not? What's guaranteed about the x-axis? Huh? Y is always zero. And believe it or not, that's your equation. That's your done. The answer is Y equals zero. Peaky, isn't it? <coughs> what? Um, yeah, but Kirby, I called out to you. Sam Susty did a bit of Kirby there. Carl moment. I bet you Carl's at home doing the same answer. He is. He's not that he's going to see this video anyway, but look. Uh, what do we have next then, guys? Write down the center of C1, and hence find the equation. Or no bother. Now, would everybody agree that this has to be, this one here has to be how high in the air? Huh? If you agree it has to be 60 into the air, why does it have to be 60 into the air? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Now, what can we say about this point here? I think it has to be 21, 21. What does it have to be 21, 21? Yeah, it's, yeah, same with the X and Y. What can I say about this point here then? All right. Actually, to be honest, I'm ahead of myself again. I only wants me to do the center of. C1, doesn't it? What's the radius of C1? 21. What's the equation of a circle formula? Okay. Now, what do I do next then, guys? And what do I fill it? What's the H and K value? 21, 21. Do you have to multiply out the brackets? Not usually, no. Not ordinary level, you don't. And 21 squared is 441. And that will give you your full marks for that question. All right. Now, finally, the question I've been trying to answer since the beginning. Uh, this question here, current page. Bring it down. Okay. Now, this, the reason why we know this is 60 is because its radius will have it 60 into the air from the x axis. In the same way, that's the reason we know this is 21. Now, see this point here, the green point. How high is that into the air? Huh? 21. So what would that make the distance from here to here? 
x minus 21, which is. So now we know that the uh, we know that this is 39. Calculated this to be what earlier? 60 plus 21 plus 8. And now we can find out what the value of x is using Texas term. Find the distance between the center C1 and C2. Actually, wait, 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 wait. 89. I'm finally going to use it on the next part. There we go. Finally. So we're, we're way too far ahead of ourselves. So that's 39, 89, and x. Is that okay with you guys? So, uh, Daniel. Which is the longest side in that triangle? It's the one that looks at the right angle. Okay. So 89 squared equals x squared plus 39 squared. 89 squared will be... Thirty nine squared is one thousand five hundred and twenty one, so we take it away. X squared. Thousand four hundred. That means the X value is eighty. Are we with that? The X value is eighty. Now, imagine you're in a test and you found all that stuff way too difficult, but you wanted temp marks anyway. What's a good way of getting a temp marks in this? What's C? Circle or a line? Yeah, so you're right just starting off. Okay? Now, what's the radius of the larger circle? What's the radius of the larger circle? So well, can you straight away, you could do 60 squared straight away, couldn't you, without any additional work? And you know that that's 3,600. What's the K value? I think we knew the K value a long time ago. What's the K value? Uh, no, no, look up. Uh, down here. How high is it into the air? 60. So is K the Y? K is the Y value of the center. The Y value of the center is 60. Yeah, now we know the x value now because we know this is 80, don't we? And what's 21? 21 across plus 80, 80 across will give you 100 and 1. Because it's 21 across for the, for the center of the small circle, and then another 80 across, because we did protect the term. So now we know that's 101. So we know that the, that's 101. That's 60. And you're done. Uh, so, you go. I see all what I can. All right. So, Sam, uh, I'm down the bottom here. See here? This is my spot, yeah? If I go 21 across, I'm directly underneath the center of the circle. If I go 80, another 80 across, that leaves me at 101, and then I'm directly underneath the larger center of the circle, so that means the x value has to be 101. All right, I need you guys to be able to measure this up for me because my ruler won't put the scale. Long story short, there's a couple of things you need to know, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a harbor, okay? Happy days. The entrance of the harbor has two lighthouses on either side. Dunmore East on the water side and Hook Lighthouse on the Wexford side. So this is Hook Lighthouse and this is at Dunmore East. Okay, happy days. Now, the detail shows a safe shipping zone area with, with the depth in excess of 10 meters, with the lower part of the estuary when it's safe for a larger ship to navigate. A sea chart is rotated in such a way that the two lighthouses are connected by a horizontal line. D dash H dash. Show the widest part of the safe shipping zone along this line as shown. So, basically, this blue point here to this blue point here, ships are only allowed to go through that part. That makes sense? If I'm a ship and I try to go this way, not allowed. 
too shallow. Is that all right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your ruler, and I want you to measure the distance from D to H. That's Sorry? Uh, it's D dash H dash or D apostrophe, yeah. Record the lengths, okay? So we want you to get out your ruler. Now, Daniel, you're going to tell me what the, uh, the, the length along the bottom is so I can calibrate my ruler accordingly. Is it 12 centimeters? So that means if I extend my ruler to here, that's 12 centimeters, okay? So 12 centimeters across, how many sounds are there? Sound one, sound two, sound three, sound four, sound five, sound six, sound seven, sound eight. So what's 12 divided by eight? Uh, 1.5, so would you say each one of them is 1.5? Okay, so you know your 1.5 value here. Uh, this is a trapezoidal rule question. Now you got you got to you got to uh, extend upwards now, right? So do you know what I mean by that? You got to do this this line here. Oh, sorry. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to get the heights. And you're gonna be quicker than me at this. Get the heights from here to here, all the way along. So just measure them and tell me when you're when you're when we're ready. Okay. And see where that last one went. Now all to remember to say there's a height at h dash and a height height at d dash. You have to put down their results as well. If it doesn't go straight up, it's zero. So I think that's zero. And I think that's zero. All right, has anybody got, got the height of the first one? What? 4.5. Next one? Yeah, next one? Five. Next one? Next one. Next one. And last, uh, second last one. Great. See the two zeros there? Why are these zeros? They don't go vertically upwards. They have to go up at 90 degrees. Otherwise, they're not, they're considered zero, okay? So all this information here, I have enough info to do my trapezoidal rule with that. We must make that really, really small. And that's all I need going forward. Right. Now, uh, what did we measure them in? Centimeters, was it? So you could, you could just say uh, centimeters, centimeters. You could just write underneath all measurements in. In centimeters, if you want. It looks bad if you keep putting in centimeters all the time, doesn't it? it doesn't quite fit, does it? No. All right. Tell you what you're doing. Let's move on. Oh, so ask us to find the area in the first question. Yep, yeah. we have to do the area. So we have to. Uh, so we have to do trapezoidal rule. Now, what is it again? H over two. I remember. First plus last, nearly. Two times D. Remain. Where would you find that on your tables? It should be an area approximation. H12. So you can see it. First one, last one, two times the rest. Okay. So what's our H value, Cormac? Yeah. 1.5 divided by 2, yeah? First, 
last few times a reminder. Okay, lob all that in. Divided by two. And it's going to be zero plus zero plus two times the remainder. Anybody get uh, 55.05 centimeters? That's correct. Okay. Now, one centimeter equals 400 meters. Okay, no butter. What's a centimeter cubed going to be equal to that? Centimeter cubed equals one centimeter multiplied by one centimeter. Would you agree with that? And in this case, that'll equal 400 meters multiplied by 400 meters. So what's 400 times 400? 160,000 meters cubed. Only for this question. Okay. So, what's the area of our shipping zone? Fifty-five point zero five centimeters squared. What do we have to multiply that by now? One hundred and sixty thousand. And we're going to get eight million eight hundred and eight thousand meters cubed. Got that? Now, salvage team can use sonar equipment to locate a shipwreck and they can cover this much per day. Find the maximum time it'll take to locate the shipwreck. What do you think you do here? Yeah. Divide your 8,808,000 and you divide it by 500,000. Huh? Uh, not really. What's seventeen point six days? Seventeen point six point six days. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Let's go. Let's move on. All right. Uh, oh, lovely. The trigonometry now. This is relatively quick. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Shipwreck. W. Open ship. Warning buoy. On Hooker Lighthouse, H. The angle stands along two lighthouses. That's uh, Dunmore East. Okay. The distance between two lighthouses is 5,550. Is, is everybody happy? That's D and H. Yeah. All right. What's WH then? Okay. Point WD. Using the cosine rule. Very nice. You actually gave us what we're doing. Find that yellow line there using the cosine rule. Alright guys, what's the cosine rule? A squared equals E squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, so shift, setup, angle unit, deg, or degree. Next thing, what's your A value? The, the WD, isn't it? Just leave it as A. What's your B value? Either length. Sorry, I just chose the other one. Sorry. Is this an angle question or a length question? 
Huh? Are you looking for length or angle? So you're looking for a length. Length question is the easy one. And it's two multiplied by whatever B is, multiplied by whatever C is, multiplied by cos A. Oh, that's the sign rule. Yeah, it's where you, you need. Uh, I'll go over that in a second. Yeah, later on, if that's okay. All right, guys, lob all down to the calculator and see what you get. And square the answer. So I'll, I'll write down the first thing first. I got one zero zero. Six square root the answer. Now, is this going to be the biggest side or the smallest side in the triangle? Why? It's opposite to 32 degrees. Being opposite 32 degrees makes you quite a small net. So your answer has to be below 5,550. Does our answer make meet this description? What's the next question? Oh yeah, good point. How much of this do I have left? I think I'll get it done. Yeah, I'll get it done. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Now, John, grab this diagram here. What's that sound? And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it across to the next question. Alrighty. What's the one from us now? The one's to be you. X. Alright, the one's to be you. Alright, I have an idea. UX. All right, now this one, this one I have to think about. Ah, found it. Once we do this, this is WX, and this is X to H. Am I allowed to use 5,550 down here? Why? That's D to H, yeah? I'm allowed to use this. I'm allowed to say that's 90. I'm allowed to say that's 32. All right, we have a right angle triangle here. We're dealing with Salkatawa. Or you can do the sine rule. Your choice. I'll do both ways just to satisfy you. All right. We are all agreed to the length question. All right. Let's start with Salkatawa. I have the hypotenuse and I want the opposites. So what one am I going to use? So sine. Sine 32 is the opposite, which is WX divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5,880. Come across, multiply up, and you get what the answer is. What's 5,880 by sine 32? Yeah, 3,115. 3,115.9. 3,116. Now, if you, you want to do the sine rule instead, is a sine rule and cosine rule work on any triangle, while Salkatoa and Pythagoras theorem only works on right angle triangles. You got it? Now, in this case, what would you choose A to be? Yeah, you, you choose any angle and the length opposite. So I can do 5880 over sine 90. And B is WX. 
and what, what it looks at is the preferred util. Uh, okay, now you want Wx on its own, so you just cross multiply up, so you get 580 sine 32 divided by sine 90, and you get exactly the same answer. You get 3116 meters anyway. Okay, we good. That was the sign rule. If you're if you if you're if you're doing the sign rule and you want the length, you need two angles. If you're doing the sign rule and you want an angle, you need one angle and two lengths. There can only be one in any equation. There can only be one part that you don't know. Okay. Now let's look at this. The cargo ship C is located on DH, traveling along the uh, line towards the shipwreck. No butter. Now it's going to. The bearing of the shipwreck from the cargo ship is 20 degrees as shown. Find WC. I know right, butter. We know what WX is, don't we? What's WX? What's WX, lads? We found in the last question. Okay. Do we know the distance C to X? Don't think so. Do we know the distance W to C? It wouldn't make sense if we did know it. Why? This is the point of the, the question. Uh, do we know the angle in here? Do we know this angle here? We do actually. 70. Right? Now, what we want to do is we want to find out the hypotenuse and we're going to use the opposite. You can use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Which one do you want me to use? We'll use the sine rule. Okay? Are we still happy that's 90? All right. WC over sine 90 is the same thing as 3116 divided by sine 70. Therefore, WC has to be 3116 divided by sine 70 multiplied by sine 90. 3116 sine 90 divided by sine 70. Anybody get anybody else get three one one six? Did you? Yeah, I'm confused by that. Three one one six sine ninety is three one one six and then divided by sine seventy. Ah uh, there we go. What's the nearest meter exactly yeah three oh sorry, it's a different answer. 3,300 amps. Yeah. We kill with that? Finally, if the cargo ship maintains its present course, find correct to the nearest meter the minimum distance between the cargo ship and the shipwreck as it passes by the danger. Ouch. What does it mean by that? So just that last question, is it? Oh wait, it's not moving that way, is it? It's continuing to move along. Sorry guys, the cargo ship was here. And it's moving this way, do you see it? And it's going to cross here, isn't it? And it's just going to continue on its merry. It's going to continue on its merry way, isn't it? When does it get at its closest? When it's 90 degrees. When it's at 90 degrees. Its path is 90 degrees to the shipwreck. Closest path. Uh, for those who don't understand that, right? Imagine I have a random shipwreck here, right? And this is the way I'm traveling. 
imagine I, I imagine I start here. Now look at this. If I draw a circle around this, you see the way I'm outside the circle until what happens? Until I make an angle of ninety degrees. Basically, I hit it like a tangent. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the closest you're going to get to it. Okay. So in that case, I think the answer is simply WX. Ship in terms of transit cars, going correct news me the minimum distance between the cargo ship and the shipwreck as a classical the danger. And its present course is what? What's its present course? Oh, I'm wrong. Its present course is? He's going this way, isn't it? The cargo ship is located here. Oh, it's perpendicular. Sorry, guys, my fault. It's perpendicular. So it's going to be the same thing again. You're going to have to hit it at 90 degrees. So we make a right angle triangle and we call this X. We make a triangle CW X and it's 20 degrees. So CW X. C. WX. Now, what's the, what, which value do we already know? What do we already know? Uh, we know we know C to W, do we? 331 6 uh, We know the angle is 20 degrees, don't we? And we know the closest it gets will be W to X. W to X is the closest it will get. And that has to be 90 degrees, like I showed earlier. Okay. So we can do, I'll do, I'll do a uh, Sagittaria this time, just to change it up. You could, you also use the sine rule again. Now, what, what do I want to know? I want to know the opposite. And I have the, so sine 20 equals opposite, which is WX divided by 3316 cross multiply WX equals 3316 sine 20. Uh, WX equals 113. And we're done.